One of the most interesting features of the, what is called the Cuban Missile Crisis in North America, is that it has three very different names, depending on whether you're a Cuban, an American, or a Russian. Cuban Missile Crisis, that's what Americans typically call it. The Caribbean Crisis, that's what the Soviets call it. And the October Crisis, that's what the Cubans call it. And if you understand the difference between these, or you understand the kind of uh, the rationale, uh, you understand really a lot about this event. It's a great entry into how it all went kind of haywire. The Soviets always called this crisis the Caribbean crisis, the crisis in the Caribbean. The reason for that is that word began to reach Moscow in 1959 that the United States found the Castro regime in Cuba unacceptable and had begun the process of eliminating it. In 1959, assassination attempts began on Castro's life, funded by the CIA. A program of state-sponsored terrorism was underway, also sponsored by the CIA, which blew up buildings all over Cuba, which killed Cubans, which torched agricultural areas. And then the real, the real corker was in April of 1961 when, when the U.S. sent 1,300 well-armed Cuban exiles into the island to overthrow it by force. It didn't work. But the Cubans and the Russians had a conversation about all this aggression against Cuba in the Caribbean. Do nothing and the United States will destroy your ally in Cuba. Or take the ultimate step. It's risky, it's quite risky, understood to be risky. Put nuclear missiles in Cuba and then let's see how keen they are to invade this island. I bet not so much. The only way they could think of to prevent the ultimate aggression, that is the total destruction of the Cuban Revolution, was with Soviet nuclear missiles. The Cuban Missile Crisis is the Cuban Missile Crisis because the bad guys in the Soviet Union put their nuclear missiles in Cuba, 90 miles south of Key West, Florida, in an unprecedented attempt to upset the balance of power and in an unprecedented threat against the United States of America. It's all about the missiles. Kennedy was, if not fine, at least tolerant of the troops that the Soviets were sending, of the boats the Soviets were sending, of the planes the Soviets were sending. But in those days, if it was a missile, it could only be a nuclear missile. That's what they were. And so suddenly, so close, the United States is threatened with nuclear annihilation from the island of Cuba, which they used to think of as their particular playground in the winter months. So the Cubans, the Cubans live in the neighborhood. I mean, they they live with the biggest bully in the world, uh, they think. And the reason it's called the October crisis is because the crisis occurred in October. Why is that interesting? Because it, to Cubans it means you're not talking about the November, the December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, or September crisis. You're talking about the October crisis. Oh, you mean the, you mean the crisis in October? You mean that time when the Americans threatened us or tried to invade us or tried to kill our leader? You live with these guys, these gringos, Americans, I mean, and you know, they know you're a communist. I mean, every month is full of crises. And yeah, that was a pretty bad one. Um, and it was in October, so it's the October crisis. But you get used to it after a while, living with the big guy up north. Those are the three names. You can see that these names occupy different zones. I mean, they do not overlap. And notice to the final point, each of them locates the aggression, the problem, the threat somewhere else and each of them feels that they are on the receiving end merely protecting themselves. <laughs>